Hey guys, uh, this is Savage Joy on Real Progressives. Tonight, I have one of your favorites. Um, he was coming on with me like once a week for a while and then, I don't know, I've been going through withdrawal. So back tonight is Pat, AKA Nate Sliver, AKA Peter Douche. He'll always be a douche to me, always. So yay, thanks for coming back, Pat. Thanks, Joy. Awesome to be here as always. You're one of my favorites. Oh, yay. Next, to, next guys, to Delaney. John Delaney is also, he's he has my heart, but other than him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you mean the parody or the real one? Actually, the parody is pretty funny. Whoever's doing that one, I yeah. got to give him some props. That makes me Yeah, laugh. it is. Oh, my God. Yeah. He just started like a week or two ago. So as it was building, people were like, fuck you. <laughs> it was <Right>. bad. <laughs> And now they have that MSN NC or whatever it is. And yeah, that guy's pretty good too. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I yeah, like that he guy. really is. Yeah, those are all, I'm are all of them. Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. What's that? I'm all of them. I'm just kidding. I'm not <laughs> actually all of them. People if ask they me watch sometimes. This show, they're going to be pissed. Yeah, no, no, people ask me, are you that guy? Because he's great. And I'm like, no, but I love that dude. You know, whatever it is. So, <laughs> well, you guys, tonight is Pat. I almost said Peter. Tonight is Pat's birthday. Yay. Yay. So magic cheers. fingers or something. Cheers. So I gotta put the asterisk out there that being my birthday, I might have had a few beers. So if I'm not as sharp as my normal fuzzy, that that's why. My show is always more fun when people are drunk. Like that's well, just. I'm not drunk, but I do have the technology and the beers to make that happen while we're on the air. <laughs> yeah, you're going to go to the bar after this and be like, oh my God, I need a drink so fucking bad. Right. <laughs> so we were kind of gabbing a little before the break um, or before we went live. There's so much going on. And this week we have the other debates coming up. So this is going to be bananas. Um, so tomorrow night, uh, we have Bernie, yay. And he's gonna be on stage with Warren. Now, I'm not expecting much from Bernie because he's gonna be too damn nice and it's gonna piss me the fuck off. What do you think, Pat? Yeah, I think we're looking at a, a safe night for both of them. I mean, it, the night is kind of a setup. I mean, not it's not like it was some conspiracy to set up the night. I believe it was a fair draw and they just ended up on the stage. But whatever happens tomorrow, the only thing that sticks around after Wednesday, because the second debate is going to erase all the jazz about what happens tomorrow. Yes. But if Bernie has a fuck up moment or there's a, a gotcha thing or something they could turn into a sound bite, that's going to continue on forever. But if he has a great night, we'll be all fired up about it for a night and then the media is never going to play any of that again. And we'll forget all about it. I think unfortunately there will be a gotcha because he came out today harping on uh, Kamala's Medicare for all pseudo quasi total bullshit. Did you see that? Yeah. And I think that's amazing. I mean, I think they're doing a great job. I think, I think Bernie's campaign is is killing it right now with taking on the media calling them out directly i mean because what happens is i mean we should get back to kamala i get kamala i guess but what happens is we tell like the people that are informed about the media bias we we tell our friends we tell our parents we tell you know we do whatever we can to to say look the media is bullshit. they're they're biased against bernie they're not covering it correctly you know we say that stuff but it sounds like a conspiracy theory to these people that just watch MSNBC all the time. It sounds like we're nutty leftists that are whining about Bernie, you know, because he's not doing well in the polls, we're whining. Um, so when you have actual people presenting the case to the public on that show that has some stature, now they may not, not like Faiz, is that, am I saying that right? Faz. Faz, shit, sorry. Faz. It's not that's spelled his, like that, but it, that's how he says it anyway. <laughs> that's a pretty dope name, though, I got to say. He's, he's a badass. Yeah, he's been good. I like him. Um, 
but anyway, when they when you have a guy like him in the face of the media challenging challenging them directly, whether it it works for the audience or not, it's it's not us conspiracy folks telling these people that. It's finally someone on on their platform challenging them. So it, it definitely helps. And and the more people that do it, the better. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I just, I already know it's going to make him racist and sexist. Like, I already know. Because they're going to ask him, you know, how do you feel about Kamala's, you know, plan? Um, and he came out today legit and was like, what she's talking about is not Medicare for all. It involves insurance companies. It's close to a Medicare advantage, which still leaves tons of people out and still leaves high copays and deductibles and stuff. And he was posting about it. And of course, everyone's like, oh, my God, you sexist, blah, blah, blah. No, the thing is, like we say, no middle ground. Don't call it Medicare for all. It's not, you know. Right. But so that that comes back to Foz, who is just, is it Foz, Fez, Foz? Foz, Foz? I believe. Foz, okay. Um, he was also just on MSNBC, I, I think, might have been CNN, I'm not sure, but he, he pointed out that one of their pundits that just was talking about Kamala's plan works for someone involved in Medicare yeah. Advantage. So he yeah. just put it right in their face, like, look, your numbers come from people that have a vested interest in saying Medicare for all isn't popular and that things like Medicare for Advantage, Medicare Advantage or Medicare for America, the other bullshit plan, you know, they have vested interest in telling you this stuff. So your audience needs to know that. And they don't know that. The audiences for both those show networks, they think when someone's on from CAP, it's like some, some legitimate, sincere think tank that sits back and looks at these policies and says, well, this is what's best for people. You know, they don't ever say this representative from CAP is paid by corporations that don't want Medicare for all to happen. So it's good that we're calling them out publicly. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, it drives me insane when people have like on their Twitter page and their, you know, bio, it'll say Medicare for all, no exceptions. And they'll be like, Kamala 2020, like, right. Or Warren 2020. Like you guys don't understand you're not paying attention um the the way like if you really are progressive and you really are compassionate and you really want to change things all you need to do is look at who those establishment assholes are terrified of and that's bernie only bernie they don't give a shit who else becomes president only no. bernie so, i mean they would they're at the point where they would be stoked if Warren won. Yeah. You know, absolutely. they really would. And they don't want Warren, but they know they're up against the wall because they know they can't sustain Biden. They know Biden's just, it's, he's just, he's kind of a placeholder, you know, at this point. That's it. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's interesting with Warren because Third Way uh, leaked a, a tweet that said, um, that said, uh, we have no no concern that Warren will stick to any of her health care uh, platform. They right. even said that. Wall Street came out with an article the uh, last week that said, um, you know, Wall Street is warming up to Elizabeth Warren. Right. Well, it's because she takes corporate money. Who the hell is going to be scared of her? Yeah. And I mean, she'll be Obama, you know, and 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 the thing is. The unfortunate thing is, and this is why she's more of a threat, is when you say she'll be Obama, that fires up half the I know. Half the party. They're like, oh, that's great. Holy shit. She'll be yeah. Obama. Yeah, um, let's drop seven bombs on seven more countries. What? Right. Which is why when we're talking with, with centrists, we don't really want to use that language. We don't want to say yeah. she'll be Obama, Obama bad. Like, that's just a whole avenue you know, it'd be great if we could convince these people that, but it's just not somewhere you want to go because you got a whole nother argument to make. Like, just stick to the fact that she's not really for Medicare for all. You know, she's backed by the groups that 
not back, but she's supported by the groups that are against Medicare for all. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want to see, I have it on my Twitter and you could easily Google it um, on uh, YouTube. But um, Warren went on Sank's show on TYT and she specifically said word for word, Republicans take dark money, PAC money and, you know, all these things. And she's and uh, Shank said, OK, well. In the, if you make it to the general, are you going to? And she said, yes, right. if I do, all bets are off. She literally said. Yeah, no, she's been making that argument from the beginning. She, her argument is uh, something to the, akin to like, I don't, the uni, unilateral disarmament, you know, yeah. she makes it like, yeah. we shouldn't both disarm, you know, like, but that's a bad argument. I mean, we, we, you can get the money without taking all that corporate cash. You can get you can like by taking the corporate cash, you're not going to get the small donut donors. I mean, it's, it's one or the other almost in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. And then Jink was like, um, he posted on Twitter. Um, you know, a guy who follows me on Twitter was like, um, you know, he was like, he said something about how, you know, anyone who takes big money is not a progressive and, you know, Jink's like, Stop saying she said that. She never said that. And he was having a hissy fit on, on Twitter. So all they did was they pulled up the clip the video. of him. Ex like it was him in the interview. It's not like he didn't see it. He was there. Yeah. And he came up with all this bullshit. Like she said she'd do fundraisers or only if they were people and she'd make calls. I was like, dude, she never said the word fundraiser. She never said the word people. She never yeah. said the word calls. Like you're not even rationalizing. You're straight up lying. Yeah. Well, I mean, like yesterday or the day before Jenk tweeted something out about, you know, how Warren is impacting other people, other candidates with all her progressive platform. And, <laughs> and that just killed me. And then you, you got Anna and all the, they have so many nitwits on that show now promoting Warren on the network. And it, oh, it's just Anna really now too. Yeah, Anna's a huge Warren fan. I mean, look, it's fine to push them both, but what the fuck? It's fine to push them both in some ways, but like once you start crediting Warren with stuff that belongs credited to Bernie, I'm not trusting you much. I mean, that's bullshit. And they're and they're pushing a lot of that kind of narrative. Look, I mean, okay, not only did Bernie talk about these things for decades, not only did he make those things household talking points in 2016, not only would nobody be talking about this shit unless he ran in 2016, but also the fact of the matter is if she really liked these ideas, she wouldn't have endorsed someone who called them all pie in the sky, never going to happen, their ponies, all this shit instead of the guy who's been talking about him. She right. picked over and Bernie, endorsed Shill, and she didn't even put this shit on her platform last year when she ran for re-election in Senate. So why why nine months later all of a sudden you support this shit? Because it's politically, you know, helping yeah. her. It's oh, for sure. It's bullshit. For sure. I mean the the one thing we know is that she wanted to be VP, right? So, so if you believe her argument, her argument was that her argument is that she endorsed Hillary because she didn't think Bernie would win. So she thought she would have more capital within the party by endorsing Hillary and that would benefit progressives. But if it's a rewriting of history because at the point before her own state, that's when she should have endorsed Bernie because Bernie lost her state by 20,000 votes at a yeah. time when he was on the rise. Yeah. He was really on the rise. So you have to think that actually played in it against him. That actually affected things in her state. So had he won her state, you have a whole different scenario. And you also have cover for the sexism shit when Exactly. When, when, when Warren 
why didn't Warren endorse him? Because he's the he's everything she says she supports. And here she is, you go girl to Hillary. You know, and that didn't happen until after the primaries were over. But the point is her endorsement would have made a difference. And she's rewriting history like it wouldn't have. And so when you learn that she was doing it really to be VP. Mm -hmm. And she got fucked. So ha ha, because she screwed yeah. over Bernie for political reasons and she ended up with shit. So and that's, and that's the thing when it, so even if you like, even if you like Warren, you know, the people that aren't following this closely and you just like her and you think she's sort of Bernie, maybe she's a little more centrist, but you're supporting her. But the number one thing people, Democrats want when they poll is someone who beats Trump. So let's take it back to that argument for those, for those kind of people. You need to take it back to that argument about, okay, so your number one thing is you want to beat Trump. Well, let's look at her political instincts. 2016, she didn't back the guy that, that could have won the whole fucking thing. Who supported everything she her a VP who, or something? He would believe me, Bernie would have picked her VP for sure yeah. in 2016. No freaking doubt. So she didn't back him. Why? Hoping to get VP. Doesn't get fucking VP, right? So bad move politically. Uh so she's got to take on Trump. So Trump says, Oh, Pocahontas. So she goes out and does this whole uh, DNA debacle. I mean, those are terrible instincts politically. You know, she goes on the uh, the Black Morning Radio show. I can't think of the name. Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club, and it's just awful on that. that was she can't. Painful. She can't explain why she was a Republican, and you know, she has all these mishmash answers. She's not. She's not polished and. When, when it comes to people actually asking her a lot of questions over the course of a campaign, she's the person that could easily lose to Trump. The Pocahontas shit and the DNA shit, that's like, put the policy aside. That's the stuff that loses you to Trump. Like you lose to Trump on the dumb shit, not, not who has the better policy. You lose to Trump on the, oh, snap, he out-Twittered you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Because that's what, that's what the right cares about. That's what people that don't follow politics that are in the middle, you know, sort of could go either way. That's what they care about. And mm -hmm. it's sad, but that's the real world. So for the people, the people supporting Warren who are like, Oh, it's just like Bernie. Bernie's not going to do a fucking DNA test. He's not a goddamn idiot. The guy has been, in, you know, he's safe and he's going to stick to his policy. He knows how to handle all these situations without drawing fire because he's been under fire for fucking 30 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really incredible. The, the Native American thing just infuriates me because I've read so many articles from indigenous peoples who have shared how disgusted they are and reasoning behind it. And it's just so freaking infuriating because also we got to think about why she did that. She capitulated to Trump. Trump said... If you want to prove it, you do a DNA test. And you know what she did? She bent over and she fucking did it. No backbone. Right. Any strong person would have said, I don't have shit to prove to you. Kiss my ass. You're xenophobic. You're racist. Go away. But instead, she said, oh, okay. And she brings out the results, which were absolutely pathetic. And then, you know, tries she thought to she had her right moment. On. Yeah. No. And then, it, I mean, it's silly, but like her beer moment on Instagram, you know, the, the little dumb shit like that, where she's like, I'm so relatable. Oh, honey, grab me a beer. You know, it's, Oh my like, God. It's, it's cringy to, to people like us, but I think that's the stuff that, that works with a lot of people that don't follow politics and are just about optics. Like mm -hmm. on the optics level, that's where Biden, you know, it would be a disaster too. I mean, Trump, you know, what was it two years ago or so right after Trump won, Biden was already starting to set the tone because he wanted to be, he was like, initially he was, he was always planning to run against Trump in 2020. You know, they talk about, Oh, they drew him in. No, he was planning it the whole time. Mm -hmm. So he started putting his, his, his comments out there and remember the whole, 
I'm going to fight you behind the bleachers. Like people don't yeah. remember that shit. Yeah. But, but Biden looked like a goddamn idiot for stooping to that level, you know, and, mm -hmm. and Trump doesn't, his stock doesn't go down for saying things like I'll fight you behind the bleachers. Like that's his brand. Yeah. But Biden's brand is, is not that Biden's brand is Obama's cool friend. You know, I mean, yeah. that's what Joe voter thinks, but I mean, so anyway, the point is optics wise, those guys are Kamala would be a disaster and, and uh, Biden would be a disaster. I mean, that's, that's obvious shit to us. Think. Yeah. I mean, if I picture, and it has nothing to do with me disliking her, if I envision the debate stage with Trump and Warren, this is what I see. I see Trump saying, you were a Republican for two thirds of your life. You said you never did anything politically until you were 50. What about the women's movement? What about civil rights? You went and got a DNA test when I taunted you and it failed miserably. And all these things like okay, Pocahontas, okay, Pocahontas, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it would just be. If she gets so nervous, she'll be like, uh, 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 like she gets so flustered. She couldn't even call him a racist the other day. Did you see that shit? Yeah, she's hedging her. She's like, well, that's a racist comment. You know, I mean, yeah, I, he I saw that. Yeah, racist like things. No, is he a racist? She couldn't say it. Are you, dude, like he literally well, so, called you Pocahontas personally yeah, and you can't right. say he's a racist. That, no backbone, none. Yeah, it's, and I wonder if, I wonder if she's timid because of the Pocahontas stuff to bring up racism with him because she doesn't want to have that war. Like when she brings up racism, he can come back with, fake Indian, you know, fake Native American, but I mean, it. Yeah, well, we're not forgetting, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, honestly, like, you know, he he preys on weakness. That's why he, there's right. no one he's gone at less than Bernie. Like it might start changing because he's more of a threat to him now. But like, you know, Bernie was like going to the freaking Senate floor with like big blown up poster board pieces of like Trump's right and calling them out. And Trump never said shit. So, yeah. And when you know, for sure, it for sure, if the debate was Warren and, and Trump, Trump is going to bring up, Hey, why didn't you back your pal Bernie? And she does not have a good answer for that. I mean, she might, Absolutely. you know, she, maybe she could craft one by the debate. But she doesn't have one now. Yep. And you know what else he'll call her out on? Because he has before. She acknowledged that. Um, that The primaries were rigged. rigged. And yeah. then she walked it back the next morning because all the shills flipped their shit. He'll call her out on that. Because he's yeah. at least, you know, guys are douche 99.9% of the time. But sometimes he'll say, you know, the broken clock is right twice a day. Sometimes he'll say something where I'm like, thank you, you know, and calling it out for being rigged from the start was right. something I was like, okay, cool. Well, so this is unpopular, but I still think, I still think Warren would probably beat him. It's just a risk. Like it's a I risk think. nobody needs, you know, I think, I don't want to make the case for it, but I, I honestly think like, if you look at, if you look at Trump's, like Trump couldn't have beat anyone that wasn't as unpopular as Hillary last time. And I don't think no matter what we do as Democrats, other than Joe Biden, Joe Biden could be as unpopular by the election if he were to somehow get through. Um, so no one's going to come in with the same unfavorables that Hillary did. And that was the key to her loss is her unfavorables you know, it, it, it's about motivating your base, getting independence out, getting enthusiasm. The, and the person that's going to, that's the biggest risk is of course, Biden, because Biden's look, Biden's support is, is 50 and up. I mean, so how, how do you have a gra grassroots? I mean, how do you have a, a, a ground campaign? Like who's, who's going to knock on doors? Who's going to be, you know, 
He hasn't even had rallies. He does fundraisers. Yeah. I mean, the energy in the party is not going to be there. So Biden is Biden would lose. I mean, that's the one thing I'm I'm pretty freaking confident in is he would lose. But I think I hate I don't like Warren. And I'm not saying this to prop up Warren, but I think she probably I think he's so untenable that I think she she would probably still win at the end of the day. But it's a risk. It's an unneeded he, risk. We but there's Bernie. so many of us Bernie or Busters. I, I'm not going to vote for her. Like, I yeah. refuse to. Well, the, there's so a the, lot of us. So my asterisk to this whole thing is that's that's if the primaries are perceived as fair. Right. Now, as soon as the more proof there is that there's fuckery in the primaries, look, it's not going to happen twice. People are, I think too many people are going to say, you know what, as fucking awful as this guy is, like we have no voice if we, if we vote for Democrats this time around. So we have to just fucking blow it up. I'm not saying that's necessarily a good idea, but, but that's what's, that will, that's what would happen if the, if the fuckery in the primary is too apparent to people. You see, but I don't think so. I think, I don't like I was at the, you know, Occupy DNC for six days in Philly. And, you know, it was a lot of, you know, Bernie or sore losers, blah, blah, blah. And I think people are so absolutely obsessed with Russia to the point that they're so damn ignorant. They won't even insist on paper ballots and stuff to try and stop Russia they don't even, you know, it's it's just hype. They don't care. They, you know, they only cared because their girl lost. That's it. So it has to be something. She couldn't lose because she's garbage. It she lost because something happened. Right. And we're all we're all sick of relitigating that 2016 thing. I mean, I can't stand, I don't have the energy to debate these people about 2016. It just it's too it just drains my soul getting it getting into 2016 we've done it i mean i did it for two years straight more or less but um but you know when when you're looking at like what you said you got russia and they're so scared of russia fuckery coming in 2020 like i just tweeted about this yesterday i said who's Raise your hand if you're more concerned or, or equally yeah. or more. And I phrase, I phrase it like that on purpose because I didn't want to have a, like, this is more important than this. I said right. equally or more concerned about Democrats rigging the primaries as you are with Russia rigging the election. And of course you get, you get all these like normal people, I would say in a way like that have just bought into this Russia stuff. Like, I don't think, I don't think the majority of the people pushing back on me were bots, you know, I think, or, or not bots, but just, you know, working for some agenda. I think they're real true, like resistors that are just so bought into Russia, but this is where their brains are broken. Like, can you not have both? Can you not secure the primaries as fair and Russia? as in the general election as fair, like, why can't you do both? You know, and it's just, it's absurd. That you can't accept that if you're a centrist, you know, like. Yeah. I mean, we've been fighting for, you know, for four years for paper ballots and, and things like this, you know, we're the ones who got fucked in 2016 because of this bullshit. And, you know, while we're like doing petitions and marching and, you know, and chanting and everything, they were calling us sore losers, but now they're, you know, they're completely hype and obsessed with this thing. And I honestly, like, I think the reason why they're still so obsessed with the Russia thing is because they don't want to acknowledge that they have given three years of their life being obsessed with something that's total bullshit. So they're going to find something. Yeah. I mean, there, there's clearly... I mean, there's stuff to find. It's just, it's just being exaggerated is is the the problem. Like Russia, of course, Russia is trying to fuck with our elections on some level. Just, just the chaos theory of putting stuff out there and creating, you know, 
wedge, wedges between us. But none of that has to do with why Hillary didn't get elected. I mean, most of the tweets and things put out on social media from Ru the Russian misinformation campaign, if that existed, was after the election. So, you know, and if you look at it, especially on Twitter, they shared a whole pile of Joanne Reed tweets and very few Bernie tweets. Like if you're, if you're trying to help Bernie, you think you might get Bernie's shit out more than Joanne Reed's. Yep. I mean, that should be fucking obvious. Like, so they're not, anyway, the point is that they can carve into that stuff and pick out little things that they can present to the MSNBC audience as collusion, you know, as, as, as Russia. Anyway, the point is, so you got, you got stuff there you can prove on some level, on a teeny level, and then you amplify it up to be a bigger thing than it really is. And then what they do on MSNBC is they, they conflate it all to where the viewers, the, the less informed viewers sort of think, well, holy shit, they're tapping into our, our voting machines. And they, yeah. they come out with this idea that the voting machines are, are at risk and they are, but they're more at risk to Republicans and hackers and they're more at risk of us than Russia. You know, mm -hmm. our fair elections are unfair because there's no oversight and states, you know, this secretary of state has power to, to do a lot of shit that they shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mark, you just gave out my secret. Are you serious? Okay, it's time to come clean. My real name is Svetlana. Svetlana nice. Bubushka. I did not want to tell you, Mark. You spilled the secret. Bastard. Bastardos. <laughs> Damn, yeah. bastards. Um, <laughs> right now, there's someone Russian watching like, bitch, that doesn't sound like me. Um, <laughs> I, I work with two Russian immigrants actually. Um, and they're awesome. I don't talk politics with them though. Cause it's work, but yeah, every time they talk, I'm just like, Oh my God, they must get bullied. <laughs> like I can just feel it. Um, but I digress. So, um, one of the other things I wanted to get to, so Kamala is a hot mess, of course. And she's, you know, she's been coming out with this complete garbage. Oh, no, actually, before I go there, a few things I wanted to touch on with Warren are she's coming out with these. I have a plan for that. But there are six of them which Bernie proposed within the past three years that she has not co-signed on. So that's yeah. one of the things. The other thing is you, um, you have her... Um, her rent, uh, her rent decrease bill, which would literally take rent down 10% within 10 years. Wow. That oh, I just, I feel like I hit the lottery. It's not like rent goes up every year. Um, right. And, and first off, like people that rent, the idea of renting in the American dream is that 10 years from now, wh whoever you are, you're, you're hoping not to be renting. I mean, New Yorkers, and there's exceptions in that world, but most people, when it comes to rent, hope to get out of their situation and in, into ownership in 10 years. So that whole like renting decrease by 10% in 10 years, it's it's just the most horseshit. It's, it's, it's a Kamala awesome. platform. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, and we're going to build millions of new homes. And I'm like, there are millions of new homes. People cannot afford to move in them. That's the problem. So she is that. Then she has the, um, uh, the you know, this, this tax on, you know, we're going to tax rich people. Well, if you read the bill, it actually states that none of them are going to get taxed until they pass. Fifty million dollars. Well, if you if you look up the math and everything, the majority of millionaires are below fifty million dollars. So that's not going to tax a whole lot of people. Um, you have um, let me see. 
uh, yeah, her so-called Medicare for all, um, which still allows insurance companies to be involved, um, is supposed to take 10 years to roll out. Um, it, oh, I like her. Um, so, so a 10 year rollout allows for the next president. If you, if you lost the election in four years, the next president is going to stop stall and stop and crush the rest. You know of it. It's done. Yeah, it's done. It's not going to happen. And then a 10 year look, you're talking about, I know it's a major change in our healthcare system, but this, the infrastructure for Medicare exists. It's not like we're totally reinventing something. You're adding what's covered to what exists in the Medicare structure and bringing all the doctors into it. Now it's not like the easiest task in the world, but you're not like, Hey, let's just register everyone in America to some new thing. I mean, it, it's not new. It's not, you're not creating something brand. You don't need 10 fucking years, 10 years is saying we want to keep the profits for the medical company even if it works 10 years is is to maintain profits for the healthcare industry and the insurance industries and the drug companies that's the only reason it takes 10 years mm -hmm. yeah it's it's actually scary um that people like like these people um one of the one of the other things that just like I mean, it was funny, and then it started scaring me when, you know, Warren's been making several posts about her green imperialism. Um, she hasn't said she's anti-war. She hasn't said stop the wars. She hasn't said specifically, you know, don't go to Iran. She, she said nothing like that. But what she has said numerous times is we need to make our military more environmentally friendly and that's right. terrifying right. like i i can't even like solar tanks i i don't know who writes this shit like it's like are they trying to make their them lose i don't know but here's the great thing about warren she met with hillary after she announced she's met with cap several times she hired all of Hillary's staff to work for her. So I'm like, well, did that work well for Hillary? Did those people do a good job? And then you're going to hire them? Okay, well. Well, uh, there are people who are on MSNBC all the time and CNN all the time. Mm -hmm. so those, those are the jobs that await you if you're an ex-Hillary person, but. Well, and, and, you know, she's kind of comparable to Kamala in, in some ways. And, um, you know, Kamala, oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, Warren, her college for all or whatever you want to call it, her, her student loan forgiveness. These people need to read these bills. They're garbage. It says up to 50,000. 50, up to. That doesn't mean you're guaranteed 50,000. I worked in federal student loans for over three years. I worked for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I'll tell you something, the majority of people I spoke to had way over $50,000, way over. She yeah. also addresses nothing about interest rates or anything like that. Kamala comes out yesterday with hers and it's the biggest joke First of all, she says that she'll give um, up to $20,000 back on a Pell Grant loan, which is not a fucking loan. It's a grant. You don't pay it back. And she says, but up to $20,000 if. if um, three years of a successful business. Yeah, because when you get out of college, you obviously have a hundred grand to open up a business and to yeah, keep so it going for, for three years. It's so, actually I mean, offensive. It's offensive for so many reasons, but I mean, to to put the one of the requirements is that you have a, a business for three years. Like the three year part is is probably the most offensive. Yeah. So you have all this debt. So what they're saying, what she's saying, is you need to gamble on get, taking more loans. Exactly. Because most small businesses 
uh, something like 40%. I don't know. I tweeted about it, but I think it's 40% fail in the first five years. Oh yeah. So, and that's not even, it's probably a higher number for, because the other requirement to her account, her, her loan forgiveness, is you have to do it in disadvantaged communities. So you have to take, holy shit, my computer is doing the, the battery thing, 10%. Sorry, pa I'm pausing here for a second. If it's I don't okay. fix this, this bullshit's going to crash. <sighs> well, at least it'll be you this time, not me. <laughs> if it crashes, I'll call you on my phone and we'll just do it from that. But, motherfucker. This yeah. is all I get out of all podcasts. Got to go. It's my birthday. I got to go to the bar. Bitch, you're staying here with me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even understand this. It's, it, it says plugged in but charging, and I've looked up all this shit. But anyway, if it dies, I'll just call you on my phone, and we'll do it that way. We'll do it live! Remember the, the – uh, <laughs> what's the guy on Fox News who did that? Uh, God, I can't even think of his name. But this is frustrating me. It, it keeps flashing. Um, but keep talking. I'll, I'll – what the hell were we talking about? Um, so Kamala, so her um student loan bill is getting ripped to shreds. Um, so basically what it comes down to is hers is going to help literally no one. Um, and then Warren's may help some people up to fifty thousand, but it won't touch on interest that keeps capitalizing every single month and raising the price. And you have Bernie's which cancels a hundred percent of everything and gives you free college tuition here out. Yeah. I think one is just a little bit better than the rest. That's just right. me. Yeah, I mean and Kamala's is the worst. And and but the beauty of Kamala is that she released it yesterday or today which on top of her medicare for all bullshit she's coming into the debates with so much ammo for people to go after her so she's on the stage with i i have to look at the lineup but she's on the stage with a few people much left of her on medicare for all and they're going to hammer her on this yeah I it's mean, a she, they came out with like a statement today like sorry for the confusion we're not confused. We're offended. There's a yeah. difference. I read the bill. It's garbage. Yeah. Like it, it's pathetic. Like you are so privileged. If you think something like that is good. Well, I mean, from the jump. So, okay. Think of the, the, think of who helps society the most, right? It's not, I mean, small business is great, but they don't help society the most. Doctors do, uh, nurses do, teachers do. You know, so you're you're incentivizing the segment of the population that's entrepreneurial the most. That's small business. Like, like, why are those the people that gets loans forgiven? Like, you know, what? Like, and and the people that start a start a small business. I mean, you're looking at what what kind of degrees do these people have? Business degrees, or you know, they're not they're not. It's such a niche that she's targeting with that crap. It's such mm -hmm. a small niche, and the huge requirements for that niche. Right, and and their their neighborhoods, which are specifically low income, that's who she's targeting. So how do you think that that business is going to survive if it's contingent on being in a place where people don't have the means to even pay for their bills, let alone go to a store or right. whatever? Right. So take her bill and make it a bill that's on top of the actual student loan forgiveness bill that mm -hmm. is designed for the black community. Take away the three-year requirement. Sure. Let's do it. But it's not a solution to the debt that's going to cripple our economy that millennials are suffering from. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a millennial, but I went back to school. I'm a grad student, and my loans are off the freaking charts. Like, I might be podcasting from Canada in a few years because 
I'm not paying my freaking loan back unless I get a good job. I mean, it's going to be a terrible life. Not well, kidding. I already decided well, if, if Bernie kidding. gets cheated again, I'm going to Vermont and I'm going to petition for it to be separated from the contiguous United States and I'm going to make him president of my land. That's what's going to happen. Is that a thing? Well, it is now. <laughs> you have to, so let's, you got to keep up the arms. You got to, you need a militia. You need a white militia. That's what I recommend. <laughs> I might join you. You need a white militia. I mean, I'll, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so what else? Oh, okay. So tomorrow night's the debate. They stuck Biden with Kamala again. So maybe she's practicing again because she, you know, her team came out and acknowledged that she was practicing for weeks. Those trite ass lines that everyone ate up. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to put food on the table, not have a food fight. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> yes, and then, Biden. and then here's the mashed potatoes in your face, Biden. <laughs> Ew, suck it. And Biden's Thank like, I want to eat my mashed carrots. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, Biden was like trying to come out, um, you know, like all hard and being like, you know, well, I'm prepared this time. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be really sad. Which is why no one's going to remember tomorrow night. Because I'm telling you, they're going to go hard on Bernie. They're going to yeah, go yeah. hard. That'll happen, but. Okay, here's my question. Well, Will yeah. Tulsi finally come at Kamala? Yeah, yeah. Tulsi's going to go after her. You for think? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I everyone, hope so, everyone, because. But, you know, so that it, it doesn't have to be Kamala. I mean, they're, Tulsi's going to, you know, everyone is going to go after both Kamala and Biden. They're both going to get hammered and they're both going to, I think they're both going to look terrible by the end of the night. Like that's my prediction. If I have to say one thing, they're both going to have clips that are going to be used heavily against them. That's just, I mean, it's all silly stuff, but they're both going to get hammered and look bad. I mean, no one wins that I, fight. No one wins. I want Chelsea to go after Warren and her green, uh, oh, imperial. Oh. I'm sorry. You That's said what I want. But she didn't yeah. say anything. So hopefully she, did you see how she tweeted at, uh, Tulsi tweeted at Kamala last week? It was, she was, she was, and it was, um, you know, it was, uh, in my opinion, uh, just strategically, it seemed like she was setting it up so that, people wouldn't think that they were going at each other out of nowhere. Right. Yeah. You know what, Tom? I don't know. Tulsi voted for the anti-BDS, but also something that happened that a lot of people don't know about because the news doesn't want to talk about this shit. Thankfully, there's social media. They voted for another freaking war budget three days ago, and AOC... And Paul and Rashida all voted for it. Right. All of them. So, you know, I, I don't do this whole squad thing. It's like, it's so like, no, they're not pop stars. They make some stupid ass decisions. Like, and okay. So here's, here's a question. I want to know your, um, your opinion on this it always goes over really poorly um so uh basically jacqueline like the easiest way to describe it is um you're not uh they don't support you boycotting israel um essentially oh yeah donna aoc is walking thin, thin on thin ice and let me tell you something if she doesn't endorse bernie I'm fucking done because she's been praising Warren a lot and doing these cute little videos with her. That's what I was going to ask you. I get shit for this, but I just feel in my gut. I don't trust she's going to endorse Bernie. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I think she is. I think, I think her brand. 
her brand is Bernie and she can, I don't think there's any benefit in her trying to exist outside of that as her own entity. I mean, so take, take a look at what happened with Cory Booker, like burners shredded him. And, and that would happen to her. I think if she, if she was to oh, endorse, she, yeah. she would get the wrath. And I don't think, I don't think you want the wrath. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that's a viable thing. Sorry. I keep dealing with this stupid battery thing. It's oh, that's okay. Nuts. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I interviewed her. I had her on here. I, you know, I opened up at a speaking event for her. Like, as you know, I don't dislike her. I just really disagree with some of her choices she's making. And I just, I, I don't know. Like, I just, I don't trust politicians. Bernie, it took me years to use the T word. And he's the only yeah. one I've ever said it about. So. Yeah, I, I don't really trust anyone. I think, I think everyone after Obama, like I, I kind of believed in Obama, but like a lot of us, but didn't know a lot about him other than, you know, when he came on the scene. So it, and you look at he his whole cabinet was picked by was it Chase or I don't know, one of the banks yeah. I, I always forget but yeah you know there, there's the memo that you, in the it's in the WikiLeaks you know you could read the banks basically sent a list of here's this is going to be your cabinet and then Obama went with it and there's no sign that Warren would do anything different and that's what yep. I worry about Warren the most with she's going to try to work with the party like let's just say you think she's good intention she has good intentions she's still going to take the list from from the democratic party i don't think who maybe who she works? crosses a couple names off but but she's she's obama yeah yeah absolutely um as far as what what don't i like about aoc um my my first grievance with her was and, and let me get this, let me set this straight. I didn't cancel her, okay? So I still support some of the things she says and does. I still consider her very strong on the House floor. Um, but some of her votes, I think, are awful. And um, the day after she won, um, I'll never forget this, an interviewer asked her, will, will you vote blue no matter who, even if it's Hillary? in 2020 and she says absolutely that was a strike that was the day after she won then she comes in you know she protests pelosi um yeah with the sunrise the movement in, in her hallway what's yeah. that with the sunrise movement kids in her right. hallway and then immediately yeah, then four days it, later personally endorses her yeah i have issues with her but i i'm kind of in the defending her camp a little bit, but she's on the verge. I, I don't know. I mean, I want, I, I don't think she's, I don't think she's selling us out. I think she's doing things strategically and I struggle with like, you can do the same thing that she does strategically without being so flattering to, to this, the centrist without, you know, like you don't have, you could, you could say, well, I, you could do it in a different way. I don't know. She, the way she does it sometimes scares me a little bit. But I, I think I still think she's got the right intentions. She, I believe we'll she does, and that's why I haven't, you know, said a few or anything. But she, you know, she does do. You know, she said that she would leave Venezuela up to her party. She didn't come out and denounce any kind of war with them. Um, she said the same thing with Iran. She wouldn't come out and say, no, don't do anything. Um, she um, uh, she completely just ignored, um, just it completely ignored uh, Elon, um, the attacks on her. She did not have her back. Right. Yes, I, I understand she knows MMT. And of course, that is a huge bonus. However... I do not vote for one reason. If she knows MMT, great. But if she sucks on other stuff, I'm gonna call her out. 
I call Bernie out when he sucks at shit. I don't like, no, I'm gonna call her out. Yes, she knows MMT props. She still voted for some stupid shit. She voted for um, the, as did Tulsi, um, to uh, extend natural gas in Australia for 40 years, just a month ago. Why? Like she's talking about the Green New Deal. Why would she do that? So a lot of these things. Um, no, I agree. And that, on some level, so as much as I love Roe, I worry, I don't want to bring up Roe too much, but like, yeah, anyway. I don't like I don't understand why some of some of Bernie's people undercut his message sometimes. And and that's my big beef if I have one, you know, occasionally with Ro. But I still love him, but like don't back Medicare for America if if you're working on Bernie's campaign and the message is no no middle ground. You know, like that's the whole point. I'm like, you so confused. Like I even said that to him. I am so confused. I, yeah, I don't. don't. So yeah. in some ways you get a little bit of that from, from Ocasio. It worries me a little, but I don't, I don't, I don't think, I think it's too risky for her. Like, even if you, even if you didn't trust her, I don't think she could survive politically without the Bernie wing. She wouldn't get reelected in chance. New York. She wouldn't get reelected in New York if she abandoned the Bernie people. Not a chance. So I, I don't. I want her to stand up to Pelosi, and I agree that she got better. Um, that you know, but it was on Twitter, and then they had that private meeting Friday morning, and I'm like, oh my god. Like Pelosi is just so evil. I feel like she could just make you sit there and go, okay. Like she's just, she's Satan. Some dark force um, shit. She's yeah. Beelzebub. Um, By the way, and, uh, if we get cut out, I have you ready to go on my phone. I'll just push the button and be up, be back. All right, stinker. Oh, speaking of Pelosi, you guys who are watching, um, Pat, I don't even know if you know this yet. So there are three Dems running against um, Pelosi, Peluser, yeah. as I call her. I and yes, you're. I do know you're a primary. Yeah, the established um, primary. Yeah, the there are three Dems running against Pelosi, and they're all coming on my show for a debate, which is gonna be insane. So it's gonna be it's gonna be bananas. So. Um, one of, uh, I can't think of his last name cause I'm a horrible Zaid? journalist. Um, huh? Zaid? No. Shahid, um, Shahid. 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 I think he says. God, I'm so racist. Sorry, people. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Stop no. calling people the wrong Holy name. <laughs> so no, no yeah. I met him. I met him in, at the, yeah. uh, at the Catam convention in, in San Francisco a couple months ago. Uh, interviewed him. I mean, I didn't. I I didn't interview him, but I set it up and was going to interview him. But I'm not good at interviews, so I just handed it off to someone else. But he's awesome. I love him. He's a really nice guy. Uh, I mean, it's gonna. It's a, it's really hard because I can't be biased. I can't. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do this professionally. I'm trying to, you know. But he's the he's the one I know stuff about. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I don't. I'm not like friends with him. I haven't endorsed him, but. It's going to be interesting because I do know he has endorsed Bernie. Cornell West and Sean King have endorsed him. These are things I know. Right. I can't unknow them. So right now I'm kind of coming up with ideas and um, things like this. The GOP -er was arrested? What? Are you serious? So... The thing about California is that, um, oh, duh. Thanks for the cue, William. Um, it's August 17th. It's a Saturday, and it'll be at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, so what a lot of people are hoping for, and one of the reasons I'm, I'm organizing it, is because last time yeah. the votes did get split, right. and Pelosi and got reelected. 
So that's, that's, that seems to be the everyone's concern. So as far as this race goes specifically, I don't know the answer to this, but I know, I know someone was talking, like someone reached out to me about approaching those, all the candidates um, about having them sign a pledge that two of them would drop out. I, it, did that happen? I don't know. Interesting. I haven't heard that. I don't see, but dude, it's like a fucking year away. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't know if you can really, I don't know. Uh Oh, are you frozen? He's frozen or possessed. I'm not sure. Um, uh Oh, Okay, so it looks like Douche uh, kind of got uh, frozen or possessed. I'm not quite sure. But, yeah, so the interesting thing about California is it's one of two states that um, actually has the jungle primary, which means the top two people go to the general, regardless of the party. So there ah. he is. So, wait, we can't see your pretty head. You can't see my head? Now we can. Okay, now we can't. Okay, now we can. <laughs> there can you, you are. Can you see my like gray no hair nose hairs now that I'm an old freaking man? No, because I'm visually impaired, luckily. Okay, good. <laughs> there you go. Was that Van Gogh in the back of you? I can't tell. Uh, it. It's an old batik, which is like wax painting my dad made in the 60s. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. He was going to throw it away. And I'm like, what the hell? That's like old. That's, I, that's I don't know. It, fits, awesome. it kind of fits our time now. Like hip, hippie, yeah. like revolutionary yeah. shit. Well, I was just saying how Cali has that, um, you know, that jungle primary where, you know, and, and what happened was last time in 2018, last year, there were three Dems running besides Pelosi and a Republican. So the three got votes split and then Pelosi and the Republican got the most votes. So it did end up being, well, two Republicans essentially. Um, but this time, hopefully it can be narrowed down to one and they'll win. Are you frozen again? Oh my God, he's frozen again. Uh. Oh no, 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 I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you how old he is, but uh, yeah, he's older than Matt. Now yeah, he's older and I'm 40. So we both look young. <laughs> oh my God, he's freaking frozen. Um. So anyway, so I'm looking forward to that debate. I've been asked a million times to have Shahid on. Um, so, and and he seems like a cool dude. So, um, and debates are always interesting. I hope that at the end of it, my goal is that people just walk away with more clarity about the differences between the three candidates. Um, and, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll help people be more, um, informed when it comes time to deciding, you know, who, who they want to go with. I swear I'm 40. I swear to freaking Buddha. I'm, I'm dead serious. I just turned 40 in May. <laughs> I know it's, I, I look 20. I get it, <laughs> but I'm 40. Let me just wait till that stinker gets back in here. Um, oh, is he Rob? Oh, interesting. I'll have to broach that as um, one of the uh, the questions. I didn't realize that. See, I've only started researching um, bits and pieces here and there because it's two weeks away. So I don't want to get like too overwhelmed. Um, but that's an interesting uh, point. Um,
You know, Sandy, I hope so. You know, the good thing about um, Pelosi being um, primaried is because I think some people have finally started waking up to how horrible she really is. Um, I'm not like impeach, 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 but I know a lot of people are. And the fact that she hasn't done it, even though she's done like a million egregious things, the fact that she hasn't done that is really, really, really just like infuriating a lot of resistors. Um, May 21st. So, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, you guys are right. Oh, cool. Well, I have an identical twin who's, um, you know, and we're Gemini. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I think the, the two things I'm hoping for, but which are both 50, 50, the two things I'm hoping for is that a AOC endorses us and B Tulsi drops and becomes VP. These are my two wants. I feel like we will win if those two things happen. So I was just saying, I think like our win would be AOC endorses us and um, uh, Tulsi drops and endorses Byrne and then becomes VP right. or whatever. I think those two things, like we are good. Yeah. And that's, I think, I think when people pan, like there are a lot of panicky people right now and they need to be reminded of what normal elections look like. I think, I mean, it's good. We're all worried, but like Bernie is in pretty good shape. I mean, when the field gets whittled down, no one else is in better shape than him. Like his base is solid. So he's got his 18, 19%, which is the people who are in the streets pretty much like his 18, 9% is actually knocking on doors and calling people and working his, their asses off for him. These other people's, yeah, these other people's like nine, 10%, they just sort of think she's Kamala's cool or Warren's cool or shit. Biden's all right. But you know, they're not, they're not in it for him. They're not volunteers. Like Bernie has a whole network of people ready to make this shit happen. But strategically it makes sense to wait until this thins a little bit more to make some of the attacks people are waiting for him to make. Like why would he, you know, I mean, as much as I think, I think Warren is our real competition in this thing in the end. I really do. Um, but making people pick sides now doesn't make sense because he's better at hit, getting his message out. I mean, do it a little bit, but like making a war with the Warren folks isn't necessarily the right strategy. Like carving out our differences is one thing, but over a longer period people will see that bernie is authentic and she's sort of not she has know. a vagina that's the problem yeah so i, I don't know i mean i am just when, when things thin and so imagine a debate stage with with the top people right now you know Buttigieg, Biden, Booker, Warren, Kamala. <laughs> like that's when it's gonna get real and you're gonna be you're gonna be fighting over this stuff. You know, and that's gonna happen. That's inevitable. We get down to those people. Like Bernie's already got a pathway to that stage with five or six people, automatic. And other people don't. So <laughs> I wish I knew what you're laughing about. I said it when she has a vagina, and Cheryl said barely, and I don't, I don't know if it was that or what, but it was good timing. Um, <laughs> this is where I wish I wish as a guy I could speak my mind, but I just can't. Oh, please. I can't. No, We're but if I talk about <laughs> yeah. Um. One, if I say one word about Warren's vagina, it's a highlight. It's a career killer. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so it's interesting. We have literally over a million volunteers. That's insane. Right. 
1.1 million volunteers. And in Iowa, who's always the first state, we have exactly a bajillion. We have so many. No. And oh. But so you bring up Iowa. This is where, like, when you look at the polls in Iowa right now, I don't give a shit about the polls. You look at the, the donors. You look at the volunteers is one thing. The other thing is the donors. Mm -hmm. Like, Bernie has, like, 1,500 donors, which doesn't sound like a lot. But, but he has comparatively? 15, yeah, comparatively, Biden had, like, 200 donors. Mm -hmm. Like, 200 people in I all of Iowa were like, mm -hmm. yay, go Biden. So if you don't have the donors and you don't have the volunteers, that's going to matter. You know, Absolutely. and then and then what was like uh, Hickenlooper had, I want to say four, four or six. I don't know. It was like it was so small. It was like a couple of families in Iowa are like Hickenlooper fans. <laughs> I mean, anyway, that, that is, those folks are just for entertainment purposes. They don't really matter. But yeah. Rob, um, Rob wants to know why um, you aren't concerned about Warren. Well, I am concerned about Warren. I think I think she is going to be our enemy in the end. I mean, not enemy is a hard word, but I mean, she's going to be our competition. So, so in my world, here's what I see happening. Worst case scenario, we get down to a three way split at the end and then we have bernie warren kamala maybe even booker i mean they could carve who knows who the who the centrist lane person emerges it's it really is too early to pick that lane one of these shit libs is gonna win it <laughs> i want to know in a second i got a point to make though so 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 what i worry about most is if there's a three-way split at the end What happens is nobody has 50% plus one of the delegates at the convention mm -hmm. on the first ballot. So they revote. So suppose Warren makes a deal to be president and Kamala is like, well, yep. fuck it. I'll be VP, yep. but you'll be freaking president, Warren. Warren, you will be president. And Kamala's like, I will be VP, which means she will be the president down the road in her mind. Yep. And then combine those and Warren, fuckers. And Warren is likely to take that deal. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, so she would what if she negotiated with Bernie? Well, is Bernie gonna give her pre would he let her be the, the president and accept the VP slot? If he if he teams up with Warren, like my heart will be in a million pieces. Like in a million pieces. Yeah, I, I mean, I can, so betrayed. I can see a scenario where he's the V. He's the he picks her as VP. The question is, in that three way split, would he offer to be her VP? You know, so if if the, if the choice is if Warren is the the kingmaker, but it's all about making her the king. But who who does she want to be her popper? And and Warren could have that power going into the primaries. Yeah. And he's and she says to Bernie, like, hey, be my VP, we'll do some progressive shit. Or she says to Kamala, you know, do you want to be my VP? Like, like that's gonna be a really fucked up situation. This is where like when everyone talks about superdelegates on the second ballot, yeah, on the second ballot they're free to vote for whoever they want. But you got to realize, like, if 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 it's that three way split, they don't even have to be the people. They they can still come out of the convention presenting this case to the public that the superdelegates weren't involved because Warren directed all her voters to vote for X. Or, you know, these people. It can be. It can not really involve the superdelegates and still be an outcome that's real. That's awful, but. I don't want it to get down to three. That's why we have to get it down to two. Yeah. Tom, um, basically the second ballot is what happened um, essentially is that the DMC um, made it seem like they did this huge reform of uh, superdelegates and everybody got all hyped. But then when you look at the small print, it all it says is that they will 
come in in the second ballot, meaning that if it ends up being one person at the end, cool. But if it, like, we, we have 25 candidates, it is very feasible that there's still five at the convention. That being said, that's when superdelegates come in. And so then they have, and there's been two senators, female senators, who literally said the words, I will never give him my superdelegate vote, and I will kneecap him about Bernie. Those specific words, two of them. So that's what we're up against. So the more, you know, delegates we get and the more votes we get, the better. It let's, it's probably not going to happen, but let's just say there's 25 people going into Iowa. Unlikely, but we'll say. That means that the, the candidate would need to get at least 15% of the vote to get a single delegate that's bad because if burn gets 13 and tulsi gets three nobody gets shit and that's how we end up not having enough delegates when we go to the convention that's terrifying well but the other piece of that that i think is the the shining light i guess in a way is that the feel is going to get whittled down. So the fears of all these people being around long, like Super Tuesday, Super Tuesday this year includes California for the first time. I don't know if ever, but I mean, it, at least in ages. Right. Um, so we vote early, which is March. God, I used to know second, third, I don't know. Early. Yeah, it's the first weekend. So there's so the first batch weekend. of voting, which is Iowa, South Carolina, Southern, uh, I don't know, four states vote before us. And then, then we're in the batch of a whole bunch of states that vote on Super Tuesday. So California really matters. But like, if you come out of California with no delegates, you are done. I mean, you can't, you, you can't win. There are too many delegates at stake. So that's going to weed out. Like, so when people are worried about these strategies of, of, like, oh, we're running this guy who's in Iowa to take – or not Iowa. Let's take a, a state that votes later. You know, some we're, we're running a, a Democratic in, candidate in Vegas, you know, or something, you know, to take votes from Bernie. Well, if that, if that person doesn't have any delegates going into Vegas, he's not going to get delegates when they vote in Vegas. So right. that fear I think we can, we can put aside. I think the, the bigger fear is – a three-way split because Warren can be sustained the whole way through. I think mm -hmm. Bernie will be there for sure. And there's going to be another centrist lane, you know, like probably Kamala, probably Kamala. That's what I see. But, but she's so awful. It might not be her. I mean, she is pretty shitty at politics. Oh, she's awful. But identity politics. True. But love that shit. But, I feel like by the time California, so California, like I said, we vote Super Tuesday. So right now she's ahead, but I don't think she's going to be ahead. I think she's going to finish like second in California. You know, so if you're Kamala Harris and you finish second in California, what do we have in already, California? I think we have literally like over forty thousand volunteers in California alone. I don't even know, but a ton, yeah. a ton, which I reminds me, I was just, I believe it's 40,000, which, which reminds me of something I should bring up, but I, I was just talking to uh, the guy that runs Bernie, Sac for Bernie. I'm in Sacramento, California. And uh, so a thing that's going to happen across the state that they're working on now, and maybe it'll span uh, farther than that, but they're working on, on connecting with community leaders in some of these disenfranchised areas that, that um, campaigns don't normally go after very hard. So there. So if, if you know if you know people that are community leaders in those areas, keep that in mind because I think they're going to be addressing that coming up, and they're looking for people that are are those leaders, you know, to to make to have events in those communities in the future. Awesome. 
So. Yeah, I, I think I'm with a lot of other people that I think my main concern about California is simply that we wind up with over 2 million paper ballots in red boxes in a back room again. That's my fear. If this shit was fair, Bernie wins California. I mean, we have more, you know, California doesn't even like Kamala. Right. She's pulling below Bernie. I mean. Well, so the, the latest, this is the latest poll has her in the lead. Oh, really? There, yeah, there was one yesterday or the day before. I mean, take it all with a grain of salt. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, the poll, look, the polls are always going to be more phone centric. They're going to ignore the fact that if Bernie wins and people, you know, Bernie outperformed all the polls last time and they haven't adjusted for that dynamic. Mm-hmm. You know, consciously they're they're trying not to. Right. Um, so he brings out more people that don't typically vote. They don't factor in how many people don't typically vote, and he brings out a younger crowd. And you know, the the people that participate in polls are are not really Bernie's folks. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into these polls. But the point is, she may be ahead now in the polls, but I can tell you, for, as a Californian, black voters typically in California don't like her. Like, the black community does not like her. She is not – she doesn't have the black vote per se. Like, this this whole, whole idea that, you know, it's her state. Like, if you – if if Kamala Harris comes out of California losing the black vote, don't try to tell me she's going to win this thing. She can't. You know, if you lose the black state in your own vote, it's over. So mm-hmm. – you know, who she has supporting her is more of the Hillary voter than the black voter. I mean, just I'm just talking on averages. Not I'm not breaking it down to any particular person, but mm-hmm. in general, the people in California that have followed politics, that are informed. I'm not just talking about my wing. Like they rule. You know, the the San Francisco Chronicle has negative articles about Kamala Harris all the time, and that's the biggest paper in the state. So. Yeah. So what I'm saying is average voters that are tuned into politics in California are already aware of her downsides. And that's – I'm not in the black community, but I hear from my friends in the black community that they also don't like her. And so my point is if she comes out of California losing the black vote, she's done. So that's why I'm not sure she's going to be the one at the end because there's too much at stake here. If you – the delegates in California are going to be huge. Like you can't win the thing. So you can't justify your campaign. And if there's one thing, all the polls have shown from the black community is they, they want to know you can win if you're a black person. I mean, so that they didn't back Obama until, until he won the early States because they were, they were like, you know, it was like a, well, it's crazy talk. It was, it's it was kind of a, a bad stereotype that they bought into. They were like, I don't believe he can actually win. So I'm not going to back him, even though I like him and love him and he speaks great and he's amazing. You know, until you show us you can win, you know, typically the, the black voters don't want to back you because they want to beat the shitty guy in charge, which makes sense. And I'm scared that might not happen with, you know, I, I think we sh- definitely shouldn't be cocky and be like, oh, anyone could beat him because, you know, the person polling at 98% that couldn't lose, you know. Yeah. I think we just, you know, people focus on the general a lot. Like, well, if Bernie doesn't win, will you vote for the? Don't do that. What about is some shit? Don't even fall into it because they are not going to like your answer. Even if you say, yeah, I'll vote for them. Then they'll say, well, what about your friends and your family? You know, you can't win. It's, it's defeatist anyway. We just got to say, look, we're in the primaries. I feel like if, if every single Bernie supporter called 10 people in Iowa phone banked, just 10 I mean, just little things like that. I think it would make yeah. a world of difference. I mean, what's that take? Like 
half an hour, you know, if we want this, we got to make it happen. It's up to us. We have to. For sure. And I don't want to undercut that message, but I don't, I, I think people are worried too much. Like, I don't want, I worry, I worry more about people thinking, well, holy shit, I guess I could accept Kamala, Kamala. I mean, not, not Kamala, Warren. I, like, I guess I could, you know, ah, shit. Cause she is the one everyone could kind of fucking accept, you know, like, let's just be honest. Like we could kind of fucking accept Warren, you know, we don't like her. She sucks. But if it comes to it, I'd fucking vote for her, you know, which I can't say about a lot of people. And that's kind of, that's, but that's kind of baked in. But my point where I was going with that is that it's so early in the election. You know, it's so early. Like when the field narrows, we're in a whole different world. Like I looked at the, the fundraising from 2016 recently, and I looked at the breakdown of, of the months, like where they made, you know, Bernie got all his money, all of it. Like the whole, you know, it was night and day in February and March. You know, and so right. we're in we're in July. I mean, you know, he was barely a candidate in July last time around. You know, so th so the field's going to thin. Bernie, when it thins, it's going to be a, a a clear contrast. People are going to side with Bernie. I mean, that's our that's our purpose is to make the case for him. But you know, he made he he raised like seven or eight times the fundraising he's making now per month in February and March. You know, that's when people tune in. That's when this thing gets real. Sure. Not now. I mean, let's make our fight now, but right now it's not like the real, like, don't panic. Cause Bernie, Bernie's going to be in the, he's going to make it to the end no matter what. We're going to the convention again. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I before we go, I'm keeping you way too long. Um, before we go, I lose track of time when I'm with you. Um, Me too. Gonna, and and my that? technical difficulties, I apologize. In the future, <laughs> I'm going to have to do it for my desktop computer because this laptop has done this twice. This is the second time. But my backdrop is my kitchen, which sucks. So I need to figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm in front of a bureau, so <laughs> that's why I just put the Bernie picture there and you could like ignore the lamp and the bureau and all that shit. Um, you guys check out my Twitter and if you don't follow me, start, um, and, uh, Nate's liver and Pat the burner. Um, but I have something, um, on my Twitter that literally it could be one of the saddest things I've ever seen on Twitter in my life. It's Hicklehopper is, came out yesterday and was like, we did it. It's all because of you. This is amazing. And all this shit. And he's like, we made it to 2% in the polls. I thought it was parody. It's not. He is literally, he's like. Now we're a force to be reckoned with. And so he was so serious. Right. He, it's a hundred percent like real. Well, <laughs> two percent. I mean, he's got the saddest campaign. What? Well, I mean, Delaney has the saddest campaign. Delaney. Let's be real. But, oh but look, those guys, the longer they're around, the better. I mean, they're, they're pure entertainment. Like, Every time they speak, they're making the case for Bernie. Yeah. You know, they're so awful that they literally are making the case for Bernie. Like, just stay stay in the debate stage forever. Like, let's have Hickenlooper, Delaney, you know, make it to the end. Go nuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw the I so so I was so I was at the cat the Caldem convention, you know, not that oh, long yeah. ago. And Look, any time a politician was around, this is the California Democratic Insider stuff, and I ended up getting a press pass through Real Progressives and covered some of it. Um, but any time there's a politician around, there's a gaggle of people asking them questions with microphones in their face, right? Mm -hmm. I was walking around, I'm like, is that John Delaney? John, John Delaney just walked by me, just him by him. He was with another guy, but nobody gave a shit. 
Like literally nobody gave a shit that John Delaney was like walking by. Like nobody cared. Oh my and god. And Bernie, in, in contrast, you'd be in a room like because there, uh, I went to, you know, you they have all these breakout rooms where people are discussing certain issues. Mm-hmm. So you go to the the caucus for you know the veterans and there it's all veterans issues and people speak on the veterans stuff and the, anyway wherever you were when Bernie was three rooms away you would hear a crowd like ah, you hear the noise <laughs> yeah but meanwhile I mean, like, like Delaney can just walk by me and I'm like that's John Delaney and they're like I thought his name was Tom I'm like no I think it's John I'm like shit maybe it is Tom I have no fucking clue who is that guy. Oh my God. He just, he, did you see yesterday he came out with a bill that he wants like a mandatory, um, service, mandatory service draft, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's terrifying. He's, yeah, and but Buttigieg does too. It's the same sort of, but that's a, it's mandatory volunteer one. (laughs) It's like, it's so obscure and it could be taken either way. It's gross. Anyway. It's so gross. Um, I want to let you go because I've kept you like really long. <laughs> but, well, I built in a cushion day. knowing that I could. I built in a cushion knowing that would happen. I built in a cushion knowing we'd be longer. But I am going out <laughs> after this for my birthday, and I I appreciate being here so much. <laughs> Love you. Are, am I allowed to tell you to tell people how old? Old as fuck. That's an age. Uh, no, I'm 49. Bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah. Oh, I need to pimp my project. God damn it. I have a, uh, so I, I actually have, I have a lot of projects coming, like seriously legit projects. Like I can't even talk about them. Like they're like area 51 secret shit kind of storming. <laughs> but the one I can talk about, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm starting, um, uh, I started writing my next book under Nate's liver and I'm going to tell you the name of it, which I haven't, nobody knows the name yet. Oh, breaking news. Like where's the banner right here? Uh, I'm going to write it as Nate's liver. The book is when life gives you Don lemons. (laughs) It's going to be, it's going to have a subtitle, something like, uh, overcoming media bias or something, but, but it's going to be a book focused on the media and the propaganda and how these disinformation campaigns work online or on the media, on TV, kind of like my last book was, but more focused specifically on the media stuff. That's awesome. Mark, you are not 79 years old. No, you're not. See, Jacqueline, I, that's what I said. You're not. You're. I, but I didn't want to give away his real number. But see, <laughs> you guys are practically siblings. And I can't say you're old enough to be my dad because I'm 40. <laughs> Me or Mark? No. Mark, well, Mark, Mark's I old enough. Believe, I don't believe Mark's that age. I don't believe him. Like, I just don't. That's bananas. I can't see the comments, but yeah. <laughs> They're all saying happy birthday and they love you. Ah, thank you. <laughs> I love the Bernie. Bernie people are amazing. Progressives are amazing. Like, like all the people on social media and, you know, in your world, my world, we're just doing it because we're pissed off. Like I got on, like, I never thought I would be on Twitter. I fucking hate Twitter. Like, I, I, I mean, I like it now somewhat, but, you know, like we're here because we are, we give a shit and this world pisses us off and we're all, that's why like when you meet Bernie people, like we all connect immediately. We're all like huggers and, you know, we, we get it. Like we're in it together, you know? So anyway, and yeah. on that happy huggy, huggy moment. Yeah. Yeah. When I meet a burner, I'm like, or like when I when I canvas and I go door to door, I'm like, you know, I'll have people who are like, oh, I'm voting for Bernie, and I'm like, ah, I'm <laughs> just like, <Right>. sorry, <laughs> what's that? You do the yeah. same. <laughs> yes. I can't help it. Oh. 
All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. And so to, this week I'm doing four nights in a row because it's a big in. So tomorrow we have the first debate night, which I always do like a synopsis afterwards um, so that you guys don't have to watch it. I'll sit through it. And then Wednesday I do the second night debate, which probably won't be as entertaining, but and then Thursday night, I have a gentleman named Stevens Orozco. Um, he's in Texas um, running for Congress in District 18, but he's a progressive. So um, very sweet man. I'm looking forward to interviewing him. And as well, I give you guys a heads up. Um, August 17th, it's going down with the debate. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Thank you so much, Pat, for coming. I love you, and happy birthday. Thank you. Love you back, and love everybody. So nice. All right. Have fun. Be safe. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Night, guys.